hello everyone. Uh, we are here, the three of us, to talk about uh, adding features to, to, to the perf tooling, observability tools in the Linux uh, that is hosted in the Linux kernel using BPF. As, as every other subsystem is using BPF, why not perf? Uh, what this is about? Um, Perf tools is a familiar control plane to, to low on some words from networking where BPF is well established. Uh, you have the perf start, you have perf record, perf report, perf trace, script, perf top, perf annotate, and all the, the profiling tracing tools that are, people are familiar with uh, for quite some time. And uh, on the other side, we have VPF, which is a which is a flexible, powerful data plane uh, uh, where we can use VPF inside the kernel to to collect new metrics, to uh, enable uh, uh, events when some other event take place. Uh, we can use all this uh, flexibility of VPF in the kernel to provide new features for Perf. And that's the, the uh, objective of this uh, presentation. And we also have a, in the BPF uh, ecology, and uh, we have BTF, uh, the, the type information uh, that uh, we can use for instance, for printing, printing uh, kernel data types, uh, the ones that we see on things like S-trace, or uh, all sorts of other um, uh, purposes. So we started this uh, collaboration of the Perf community and BBF community in the Linux kernel by providing, enabling Perf to uh, help developing BPF. Uh, so we collaborated on having BPF profiling where you can do a perf top, let's say, and see that there are uh, BPF programs that are using, that are causing some specific events like cache misses or uh, taking CPU cycles or uh, all sorts of events that uh, you can monitor with perf. Uh, doing it with sampling, uh, so you can do annotation, for instance, you can see, oh, that, that's the, uh, the BPF program that's taking more time. And now let me see the source code for the BPF program. Uh, and let's see what is the line on this BPF program that's you know, causing this, those events. And finally, uh, for BPF event counting, uh, uh, how many cycles, instead of sampling, just counting the number of, uh, of cycles or uh, cache misses or any of the lots of events that you can measure uh, with the perf infrastructure. And now, now, more recently, we are working on using BPF to help perf. Uh, so that again, um, BPF event counting in perf these days, uh, it will be detailed by what Song will uh, present. Uh, involves you, you use perf to specify what BPF program you want to count events and then perf will use BPF to uh, connect BPF code to the beginning of another BPF program and then at the end and then it will re read the, the counters at the when that BPF program is going to run and then at the end, and then aggregate this and then present it to the user, uh, just like it does with uh, a normal perf event. Uh, initially, we had a, uh, this effort on having a sub comment for the BPF tool, which is the BPF uh, canonical utility. I use a space for you to look at what are the BPF programs that are running, uh, look at what are the BPF maps that are in place for you to do all sorts of operations with BPF, use BPF tool. And one of the operations that was introduced was to, for profiling using BPF tool. 
but these uh, had lots of things in common with uh, what you can do with perfstat. And so this led to using perf to count those events. And with that, I'm going to see that lots of the features that are present in perf became available to profiling BPF, or counting events in BPF as well. We will be talking as well as B, uh, about BPF counters, but this will be detailed by Song. And we will also be talking um, uh, about using the concept of BPF counters to, to do uh, efficient, scalable uh, C group uh, event counting and profiling. That's the matter of Namyung's uh, part of the, in this presentation. Uh, BPF for Perf as well involves reusing a BPF infrastructure, uh, not just uh, using BPF programs uh, put in place by Perf for counting or et cetera, but things that were done uh, for BPF uh, to reuse it in Perf as well. For instance, uh, when a sample takes place, uh, if CPU cycle is collected, let's say, we need to translate this to a uh, to a memory map, the executable memory map where this happened, and we need to translate this into the the process where this to, that has this memory map. And the infrastructure in Perf involved uh, receiving a metadata event where there is the the name of the uh, the the DSO, the, the binary uh, that is on some specific map, where this map is in memory, uh, details like that. But And then later on, when we would do perf report, we would have to open this file uh, to look at the symbol, the, the symbol table, to then map to the symbol. But it could happen that uh, uh, while the, 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 the monitoring session was taking place, uh, an update was performed. Let's say you update the machine while you were doing the, the profiling uh, for a long running session, let's say hours, you were trying to find if something happened over the course of hours. And then when you, at the end, when you finish the session and you look at the file where the map, uh, the, the map was, it was a different file, so we couldn't uh, resolve the symbol uh, correctly. So in BPF, for their particular reasons, similar reasons, they, they introduced a helper called BPF get stack. And this BPF get stack uh, did something that we wanted to do in Perf, but didn't uh, uh, manage to do, which is to look at the map and figure out the the ELF section where in this uh, for this map where the build ID is, which is a unique cookie that uh, uniquely represents that specific binary, and and get it in, inside the kernel. So we decided to get this uh, code that is for BPF inside the kernel, the infra BPF infrastructure, and reuse it in uh, in the Perf record and met metadata in Perf. So nowadays, when we get the notification from the kernel that the new memory map is being put in place, we get the build ID, and that is fantastic. I mean, we don't have to, at the end of the session, look for those build IDs. We remove this window of uh, updates, and uh, so it's one case where what was done for BPF was reused for Perf with. Uh, um, which was really good. BPF pro profile, uh, as I said, is limited to some events, like that, that's the one, uh, the event cycles, instructions, uh, level one, uh, data loads, uh, less level cache misses, insertion TLB misses, and the data TLB misses. While perf has a lot of, uh, I mean, vendor events, uh, lots of events that are specific, let's say to Skylake, or to Ice Lake, or to Ryzen 9, or to Zen 2, Zen 3, there are many, many, many events. So 
uh, for BPF profile to tap into to to measure those events, you would have to go through a process similar to the one that made it possible to do it with Perfstat. And then it's a different workflow from 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 the familiar Perfstat. So it would be really nice if we could use Perfstat for this purpose for. Uh, the, the same purpose that the BPF profile uh, was uh, written. So that, that's, uh, you can see the, the help for BPF prog profile. Uh, it, you basically, you, you BPF2 prog profile is a sub sub comment, and then this prog, it's a BPF ID, or there are other possibilities for you to specify what BPF program you want to measure. And then there is the, 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 the metric that you have to use, which are one of those five. Uh, and this is an example of it in use. So you specify that you want to profile for the, uh, ID, uh, the PPF program ID three to four for a duration of three, uh, I think it's seconds. Uh, and then cycles and IoT or TLB measures. And then it runs for three seconds and then it states uh, the number of cycles and ITO B misses. So, purpose that for BPF uh, uh, is it, it becomes just another target. With perf, you can specify what you want to profile or what you want to count. Let's say you can count for a PID or and all its threads, or just for one specific thread, a TID, or for everything that happens in some specific CPU or set of CPUs or a C group or many other things, and now for a BPF program as well. So the, the workflow is familiar, have lots of events. Uh, there are things like metrics where instead of measuring some specific event, you measure for a metric, which involves sometimes multiple events, and those events are put into some equation, some calculations performance, and then you get that meta event, let's say. So it became a first class perf stat citizen. But how it works? It, it works using a feature called BPF scales, which, because there are many ways for you to use BPF, and uh, among them you have uh, BCC, BPF trace, and, and all you can do it in C. So BPF scales come uh, to help, in, uh, you just have to say what you want to run in the kernel and where, and then you can collect the information in the user space through BPF maps or etc. It all is done uh, and it's built the, the, the kernel part, the user space part, you link it with perf and then it becomes just, I mean, another event, let's say. The details are on this DevConf CZ uh, from last year where you can see everything that happens in two BPF run queues lower, which is one a tool that uses this concept of BPF scales. If you click on this uh, on the presentation, you can go there. Uh, you have all the details in there. Using it, it's it, as I say, it becomes a just you see the event re reference cycle cycles, and then you specify which BPF program you, you want. And then there is this goodie which is not present on BPF profile, which is interval range. So every one thousand one thousand milliseconds, one second, you print. And so you go on printing and that is just like a, some, some VM stat or something like that. It's equivalent to this dash P dash capital E as well. So th those are examples uh, of perf uh, being, uh, having new features being used, implemented by BPF. Now we can switch to a uh, song that he will talk about perf stat with BPF backend, backend details. So should I take over, or are you gonna keep? Uh, yeah, I, I, I can. I can. I can go on moving. Uh, you just say next. Okay, great. Thanks. Um, hi. So now I will talk about uh, uh, BPerf. We call it BPerf. It's uh, we use uh, BPF to support the counting with uh, perf stats. Let's go to next slide. So here's the problem we are trying to solve. We have the data center environment. So we get so many tools that are monitoring the system at the different granularities. 
like uh, we have system look at uh, tools that monitoring the system wide uh, metrics. We have per precise uh, uh, pre process uh, metrics, and some uh, special uh, services even care about the per request uh, cost. And uh, on one side, uh, the, the interesting part is a lot of these tools they're monitoring the common metrics like cycles and instructions, and that's those what they care about. Um, on the other hand, we do have limited hardware counters. For example, on Intel CPU, we have three fixed uh, uh, hardware counters and four programmable counters. So uh, when there are more active events on the hardware than the hardware counters, we have to do a uh, time multiplexing. So we are facing a very tough trade-off at that time. So do we want a low accuracy, meaning we increase the interval between time multiplexing, or we get a high overhead if we reduce the interval of this time multiplexing. So I have been working on sharing these counters in the kernel for, I don't know, two, three years. But after quite some time, I started hating this. Is this the right way? Am I writing the crack the code this is really working and i started doubting myself so can we go to the next slide so now we move to the solution is like maybe we can use bpf to do this counting instead of like the kernel to do the management of counters how would that work so we only create Per CPU perf event on each CPU, which means this event will not move along with your task. Then we have a BPF program trigger on contact switch, and this BPF program will read this uh, per CPU perf event, and based on the information of this contact switch, this BPF program will aggregate its readings in the BPF maps. Then the user space will only read the output from the BPF maps which is aggregated by the BPF program. So in this way, we, have, we could have multiple uh, BPF program, we could have multiple, uh, multiple granularity, multiple domain reading, all sharing the same per CPU perf events. Let's go to next slide. So how do we use it? So we have like uh, two ways to specify I want to use BPF to do the counting. One way is to use this uh, comma B uh, noti altogether notation that uh, in this example, we will see like uh, the first uh, of B, which means we want to, no, that's not a comma, sorry. And <laughs> cycles B, that means like we want to use BPF for cycles, but with the next we have context switch without B means we do not want to uh, use BPF for context switch. And the second example, we use dash dash BPF counters, which means we want that for both cycles and context switch. The result of this is like there's no time multiplexing. So in the, second, in the example below, we started like 20 um, global counting perf states that are uh, doing both, uh, doing cycles. Otherwise using BPF, they only use the one counters on each CPU. And if we do the second command, which runs in parallel with the first one, it will do cycles and the instructions, and they share the cycles instruction as counter with the first uh, 20 uh, perf state, and the instruction will use another counter. So only two counters per CPU is used for all these 21 uh, perf state uh, sessions, which means we don't have to do any time multiplexing. We get uh, the very accurate counting for the whole period of uh, measurement. Let's go to the next uh, slide. So here's the how how this works, right? So you can see we have the blue objects, the orange ones and the green ones. The blue ones are shared among different sessions of perf set and the orange and green ones are two separate, uh, separate sessions. So we have the leader 
CPF program that is triggered on either contact switch or when the user calls uh, the leader's program. And the leader's program will first read perf event from the perf event array. And the leader program will compare this reading with a reading from a previous reading array and store the difference on a different reading array. Then the, when the leader program uh, stops, it will trigger F exit uh, programs, uh, which is the two follower program. You can imagine the FX program like a return probe or something. Basically, it's a BPF way to trigger some program when another program exits. And the follower uh, program will check the condition of current either contact switch or there's the user trigger and decide whether I want to aggregate the value in the diff reading array to my output array. And then with the user uh, ready to read this output, the reader only read from the output array. And so it doesn't have to touch the actual reading from the perf event. So there's one condition that when the user want to read something and the current reading on the perf event is not in the output read array yet. So in that case, the user need to call the leader program. We have the, there's a BPF run command. This is a syscall. You can trigger that uh, uh, leader program on all the CPUs you need to check and use that to aggregate the latest reading from the perf event into the output array. Then the user space read output array, which will have all the information, all the contents we have. So let's move to the next slide. So there's uh, something tricky, it's like we want to share these uh, perf, uh, uh, hardware counters among different uh, process. So we achieve this by using a BPF map and we pin that in uh, this location, we call it a perf attribute map. So basically the map have a uh, uh, data like the one below. It has a link ID, which is the BPF link of the P, uh, leader program and the diff reading map ID. So when a user want to share this uh, perf event, it will hold a reference to the link ID. And because the link ID, uh, the link, the BPF link hold a reference to the BPF program that hold a, a reference to all the maps we use by holding a FD to the link, the user will hold a reference for everything. And when all the users exit, or we close all these FDs, the perf event of the program and the map of freight. So we won't be leaking any resource, but we still get the sharing going. So next slide, please. So uh, with this approach, we could have like this all monitoring demons and all the services that are doing self monitoring for the same metric in reading the uh, ping the BPF map and using the same uh, protocol to access this uh, perf events. So right now the kernel supports up to 38 uh, follow program per leader uh, program, which means we at least I think we have more than enough uh, sharing for the system from, from all the use cases I've seen. Um, I think that's all I have. If the next slide, yeah. Okay, thank you so. Uh, uh, my name is uh, Namion Kim. I work for Google at Linux Kernel Performance Instrumentation Team. So I'm going to share how we use BPF to use perf event in a scalable way. Next, please. So, so our use case is that 
the Google Data Center runs uh, lots of jobs in the machine. So we want to monitor those jobs running in the C group. So we uh, want to monitor C groups that are using perps TED. So a uh, few of my colleagues already talked about this topic two years ago at LPC, so you can refer those talk to for more details. Next slide, please. So during the we faced scalability issues that so it's C group to monitor the C groups, it's C group has its own uh, perf event. That means we need a number of events multiplied by the number of CPUs multiplied by the number of C groups. So we need that many of file descriptors and it also has memory pressures for the backing storage and the kernel. And also it increased the overhead during the context switch when the C group switch is involved in that as each C group has its own set of events, when it's switching to a new C group, it needs to uh, program the, the hardware PMU counters this time. So that's, that adds many uh, overhead in the critical path. So we used a workaround that First, we need to uh, limit the number of C groups to profile at once. So, uh, and it makes uh, some blind spots, and we we cannot see the consistent data across the, all the C groups since we have some fresh uh, metrics for some C groups, but others uh, ha others have uh, stale uh, data. So that's the problem. So next, please. So looking at the C group perp events, they are basically a kind of uh, CPU events, but they are associated to the C single C group. And we we are using them as we we want to monitor. Uh, lots of C groups, but essentially they are using the same set of events. This is the common use case at Google. And we use that, we, we use the full C group uh, command line to ensure we can measure, remeasure the same set of events. But actually there's no need to have separate events for the C groups since they are basically uh, CPU events. So we can share a single CPU events for C groups. Uh, all, we need, all we need is just a separate count per C group to, to aggregate the events for C groups. So next slide, please. So, I proposed uh, in kernel aggregation approach using the IO control interface. So we, I proposed two set of interface, one for adding C group uh, counters for the existing CPU events and one to read the C group, counts, C group counters from the event. So basically it, does uh, similar things on context switch. It reads the, the current uh, perfect event counters and aggregates it to a uh, current C group. So in, in this way, there's no PM reprogramming is needed during the context switch. But it was rejected by the perp kernel maintainers due to some interface concerns. And so, next slide, please. So I came up with the, the BPF approach. And during the time, uh, the BPERF infrastructure was added. 
so I can share that infrastructure to do the things. But it's a little bit uh, different in each case in that for original paper, uh, want to share perpetrators across different processes. But in this case, I just want to uh, share perpetrators in in a process, but across a different groups. So I made some modifications that I add, uh, added uh, to kind of five that thirteen. A software event called single switch event is similar to a context switch, but it only triggered by context switch involved in uh, different C groups. So we can we can save some context switch overhead during that, which if the task has switched to a same C group. And and in this case, I don't need the leader and follower separation. So I just use single BPAP program to the counting and aggregation. And so it collects the events and save the, the result in a perceived PRA and single ID as a key. So next slide, please. So actually, we are experimenting with this and want to deploy it, uh, the BPF step uh, after, after some experiment. So I can share some benchmark result, estimate, estimate, estimate the context switch overhead. In this benchmark, I use uh, many tasks, uh, communicate with the pipes, but each task is in a different C groups. So this graph shows that the blue line is the, the, the baseline, is context overhead, context switch overhead without perf running. And red line is the existing the perf step with C group events. The, the, uh, the way we use right now. The, the green line shows that the new, the BPF approach, you can see it's much closer than the baseline, the blue, blue line here. So um, uh, I think with this approach, I can, I can uh, make it more scalable and uh, actually, it can get rid of the the file descriptor and memory pressure due to the many perf events, and and it can save the context switch overhead. So, so I, I expect we have more scalable perf monitoring with this batch. So. Yeah, that's it. I pass it to the end again. Yeah, so so we saw uh, uh, three um, uh, three uh, approaches uh, of implementing new perf uh, features uh, that uh, at first were attempted to to be implemented on the on the usual way uh, without using BPF, trying to uh, add functionality to the kernel that would then be activated by perf, and then the, by, by by the perf tooling as a space. But uh, as and this was attempted multiple times. I mean, uh, uh, so it was interesting to me to see uh, uh, when. Uh, Namnyung uh, decided to try the BPF approach that uh, he stumbled on some difficulty. There was something that was not working, uh, was missing. And uh, Peter Zilstra, the uh, kernel maintainer for Perf, he, instead of uh, complaining about this being done with BPF, he was, uh, uh, I mean, Disappointed that uh, it couldn't be done with BPF. So uh, I mean, it was uh, 
stamp of approval that uh, made me really happy that uh, uh, someone who understands per, uh, all the details or more than me and more than anybody else, I think, uh, thought that uh, using this approach was valid, it was less complex, was more flexible, and that we should continue pursuing on this path, which we did. And uh, it resulted in something in results, as you could see from the new graph. For the future, uh, there are other ideas that are that uh, we have on uh, using DPF to implement new perf features. One of them is this triggers, which is uh, you you set up some events, some perf events, be it K probes or U probes or some DPF events or any event, and then, but you don't want to to measure it all the time because it will produce lots of data. You want to to produce uh, to, to to count those events or to sample those events only when some other event takes place. So only when you start swapping, you want to to see what's happening. Only when uh, processing a, a a a transaction takes more than what's acceptable, you want to enable those things. And then when things get back to normal, which is another event, you stop. Uh, measuring so you inside the kernel can limit what is being sampled or counted or whatever. So uh, that's something that uh, I myself I, I, I started working on these and I plan to resume some. There are other things from BTF like BTF get branch snapshot that Songli uh, has been working. I think he can talk a little bit about it just briefly. Yeah, sure. So this is uh, what we have been working recently is to use the branch uh, snapshot or branch recording hardware or we call uh, it's called LBR on Intel CPUs and with that slightly different uh, name for other architecture. But basically right now we have that uh, it's very useful on a hardware event on something what's going on uh, with the with the, all these branches in this in the system, but uh, we found that could be also super useful on a software event. Uh, basically, uh, for example, if you have a long like uh, Cisco say perf event open, you get an error, but you don't know why it is returning this error. It's okay, return your e inval is invalid output, but exactly what's wrong with that? So this on the software events that will trigger this and get a uh, branch uh, uh, trace at that point. And by looking at those branch, you will see, okay, this is a uh, perf event open function at this offsite. We are going, we say go to error out. That means, okay, something was wrong. And that piece of information is uh, very useful in debugging such issues. Otherwise, we imagine you're gonna keep like adding print k to your perf event open, or keep changing your uh, perf event uh, perf event open uh, argument to try to figure out what's going on. So right now we have that on the BPF side. Uh, so on the BPF software event, uh, you can call this helper and uh, dump the branch uh, records for you, and then you can start making sense by looking at uh, the uh, the war uh, information of, on your kernel binary. Yeah, so uh, I think that this is what uh, we had to say, and then I think that there is five minutes for questions. Does anybody have any questions? I'm looking at the, the chat. I'm not seeing any question there. I'm just
Oh, I'll just uh, join in for a minute to, uh, uh, are there some specific areas where you're looking for help with? For help, I mean, uh, mm -hmm. the testing, t testing is an area where, I mean, uh, for Perf specifically and for all those new features that you can uh, have mm -hmm. Perf and BPF in, in together uh, is interesting for testing because, uh, I mean, uh, we, we have Perf test, which is a so common Perf test. You can, if I have Perf installed, you can run Perf test and it will run lots of tests that test for various aspects, including uh, the BPF integration, uh, but more are welcome. Uh, okay. So uh, that, that's one area. You, to, to contribute with that, you don't have to know, let's say, C. You, you could, there, there are shell tests where you run, uh, you create a shell script, a bash script, or, and then you, you, you specify, run this command, get the output, check if the output is what they expect it to be. Uh, Let's say you, you ask for a backtrace and then the backtrace comes, you know that the backtrace should be uh, main calling these other functions or the function. And then if it does, if it's different than that, it's a problem, you should flag it. There are some examples uh, of such tests that does involve C programming. But if you are versed in C, you, you can as well add C based tests or any other language. Right? Uh, uh, the, the number of features that are present in Perf and eBPF, and when you combine both, it's, uh, it's quite a lot. So uh, having more and more tests for, for that is really important. And in, in, in developing those features, I mean, uh, mm -hmm. there's always, there's always space for more people uh, interested in learning and, uh, and uh, participating in the Perf development and BPF development. Do we have anyone else that's around um, that would like to turn on the camera and ask questions about um, this con? Okay. Uh, is there anything that's showing up in the chat? Just double check that. I. Still takes a while to switch back and forth between the scrap, the chat, and the screen share for me. I'm afraid. Yeah, I mean, there's a question about if I consider writing a book on the Perf tool. Yeah, I, I considered writing a book, and uh, even there was a conference in uh, BPF plus networking in Puerto Rico, and I met uh, Brandon Gregg for the first time, and he was the one who was. Uh, encouraging me to to write such a book, but writing a book is a big endeavor. Uh, I keep thinking about it, and uh, I have a, I mean I have a really young kid now, and it's taking a lot of time. So uh, I, I may end up doing that, but uh, I don't think it's something I'll be doing in the near future. I'm not seeing any other questions come in. It was an excellent presentation. Thank you all very much for pulling it together. Uh, it was much appreciated. And um, I assume you'll just sort of hang out in the chat if other questions sort of come up for now. Right, sure. Um, 